certain rules have this property then of causal invariance. So how do you find causally invariant rules? Yeah, that's that's tricky to do. The first serious piece of work that I did on the physics project was exactly on this in the summer of 2019. Because I, I was sort of weirdly placed that I had this background in, in developing automated theorem proving tools, it seemed like the obvious thing that Stephen, Max, and I agreed on, on doing was to see if we could find a way to use automated theorem proving technology to say, well, given a rule, can we prove whether or not it's causal invariant? And so I developed a kind of causal invariance theorem prover that we used during the early phase of the project, and then eventually it got, it got incorporated into some other functionality that we were building, which is still available in the fun- you know, I should clarify, as you, well, Mark, as you well know, but it's worth saying that all the functionality that we use for kind of analyzing these models, evolving these models, extracting data about dimension and curvature and all this kind of stuff, all the code is freely available in the Wolfram Function Repository. If you have a version of Wolfram Engine or Mathematica, or even the free version of Wolfram Programming Lab or whatever, you can go and use our functions. One of the principles we try to have, and certainly I try to have, and I know Stephen does too, is that we shouldn't have any pictures. In, if we write a paper or a bulletin or a blog post or something, there shouldn't be a picture in that thing that someone who has access to a version yeah. of Mathematica can't in principle reproduce. And that's, a, that's yeah. a general principle we've tried to stick to. So th- there's a bunch of functionality that I developed, like things like, well, there's a function called causal invariant Q and total causal invariant Q. There are other more refined functions for, for, for doing similar things that effectively do these algorithmic determinations of, of causal invariance. And, and I mean, uh, it's a little bit hard to articulate in words exactly what the automated theorem prover is doing, but effectively what it does is, um, so both... Hypergraph rewrites and the causality of hypergraph rewrites have some algebraic structure. So when you've got hypergraph rewrites, you can compose them in sequence. You can do, you know, rewrite one, then rewrite two. And you can also compose them in parallel. You can have two branches of the multiway system. One does rewrite one, one does rewrite two. And those are algebraic operations. One is effectively like a kind of generalization of matrix multiplication. The other is like a kind of generalization of a tensor product operation. And they satisfy certain, certain properties. So for instance, the sequential composition is always going to be associative. The parallel composition is always going to be associative and commutative. So it, 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 so it, it's, it doesn't matter how you parenthesize the composition, it's always going to give the same answer. And when you're composing them in parallel, it doesn't matter in what order you do the parallel composition, it's always going to give you the same multiway system. And similarly, the causal relations between these events have some algebraic properties. They also have a tensor product structure, although it's a slightly different kind, called a partial monoidal structure, etc. So anyway, Without wanting to get too into the details, basically, I, I worked out that there was a, 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 a finite set of axioms that defined essentially the algebraic structure of multiway rewrites and multiway causality. And then I fed those axioms into an automated theorem proving system and then encoded the statement of causal invariance as a theorem, right? So it's saying from these axioms that we, we know have to be satisfied for how hypergraph rewrites compose and how causal relations compose, can we prove that the causal structure is going to be the same? independent of the order of composition of these hypergraph rewrites. Yeah. So I essentially took the statement of causality and reduced it to a purely algebraic statement that could then be fed into an automated theorem proving algorithm. And it's not foolproof, because obviously yeah. in general it's going to be an undecidable problem. But there yeah. are these simple cases where you can actually prove formally, yes, this is causal invariant, or no, we can find a counterexample where this is not going to be causal invariant. And again, during, certainly during the early stages of the physics project where we were actively doing these systematic searches for causal invariant rules, that was functionality that got used quite a lot. And, and, and there are now more optimized versions of that that exist in the function repository. Thanks for listening to The Last Theory. Join me for fresh insights into Wolfram physics every other week. Subscribe to the free newsletter, podcast, or YouTube channel at lasttheory.com. After all, this might be the most fundamental scientific breakthrough of our time.